Hey, V Group leaders, I hope you're having a great September. I want to spend the bulk of our time in this e training really encouraging you theologically and practically. And so, what I really want to talk about today is a topic that I'm being challenged in right now, and that's prayer. And I think almost anybody I ever talked to, is prayer is one of those elements in their in their walk and their faith that they they struggle with. And what I'm hoping to do is take you to a passage, 1 Corinthians 2, and encourage you with some important biblical truth that should then encourage, motivate, drive, and empower you practically in your prayer life. And so I want to look at this passage with you briefly. It's 1 Corinthians 2, uh, verse 11 through 16. And this is what Paul writes. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ." What I, what I want to share with you is really important. It, it, it ties into the biblical truth of salvation, that when, when you repent and you believe, the Spirit of God comes within you. You are united with Christ, and when the Spirit of God comes in you, the Holy Spirit, He regenerates and makes your heart new. And so the Spirit of God, the presence of God, dwells within you for the rest of your life. Now that's that's really important, and, and what Paul is driving out in this passage is to teach us an important important truth that because we are spiritual people, because Jesus has saved us, the Spirit has been imparted and given to us, the Spirit of God dwells within us. And because of that, this is the very end in verse 16. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? That's a rhetorical question. And then he says, but we have the mind of Christ. Later, or earlier in that passage, I think it's uh, uh, verse 11, for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. What Paul is trying to say here is that if the spirit dwells within you, you understand the thoughts of God. You know the heart of God. And that spiritual truth should empower the way we pray because we're not alone. We have the spirit of God dwelling within us. And because of that, we know the heart of God. And we're not just communicating, praying that, God, we hope you're out there somewhere. We hope you're listening to us. But we're praying, and the Spirit of God is hearing us. And that is such a powerful truth for us. That should change the way we see prayer, because we we have an intimate connection. Because of Christ's work, the empowerment of the Spirit to God. Because the Spirit dwells within us, you and I can communicate with the Lord. He knows our hearts. He And because we have the Spirit within us, He speaks to us. And my, my practical uh, encouragement for you in this is, I think one of the things that happens is because you and I, because we don't carve out time to be with the Lord enough, because we don't spend enough time in prayer, our, our, our communion time with the Lord, our, our time just being in His presence is often um, because it's because it's been relegated when we want to begin to pray for other things like revival or opportunities to be able to share the gospel we're driven back to to saying well I've just not spent enough time with the Lord I need to do that first and and, and so here's what I want to encourage you in Carve out time in your life and be empowered by these truths that because the spirit dwells within you you can pray and speak to God. Carve out those moments in your life to be with the Lord and make that regular. Just think about a relationship that you're in. With my wife, when I don't talk to Rachel a lot, there's a disconnect there. And it's hard for us to be able to even work on our family or focus on practical needs that we have. We've got to go back to, okay, we haven't been with one another in a while. We haven't had a sit-down conversation. How are you? How am I? 
carve out that time to be with the Lord, be faithful to uh, to do it, lean into the fact that the Spirit dwells within you. And as you do that, watch how it then moves you to not just spending time with the Lord, but then to begin to pray according to His heart, that the lost would be saved, that revival would hit this city, that uh, your neighbors would come to faith, that you would be given opportunities by the Lord to share the gospel with other people. And I think that as you see those things play out, you're going to see how significant prayer is in all of that. And so I hope that's an encouragement to you. Uh, be encouraged. The Spirit of God dwells within you, and you can pray. And uh, just be faithful, be diligent to carve out that time and watch what the Lord does with your prayer life. Have a great day. Praying for you.